Hello again, YouTube land. Um, sorry, I haven't been around lately since I posted part one of uh, shifting views, realities, etc. Um, <laughs> things got remarkably busy over the next couple of days, and then it turns out I had a horrible um, case of sinusitis relaunch itself on me, as you can tell from the sound of my voice. Um, I also found out on Monday when I went to get the prescription for antibiotics that is the only thing which will get rid of sinusitis in my case. Um, my blood labs that my doctor asked for at the beginning of the year came back, and she had the prelim results. Now, I always knew since having had gastric bypass that I was going to have deficiencies. It's just a given result of doing that kind of severe uh, GI replumbing. I was always worried that my ardent hatred of pills would get the better of me in the long run. Because knowing I was going to have deficiencies and absolutely refusing to take supplements and multivitamins, you know, you're basically asking to be screwed. Um, and I always knew that, but I was always so self-destructive that I never really cared until recently. And actually that's something about myself. It's one of those shifting self-revelations. Um, I realized now that I'm married and have, I don't want to say a family of my own because, you know, I have parents and I have siblings, I have a family, but now that I've started my own portion of the family, um, I find more and more often there are things I actually give a shit about now, which was never the case when I was younger, because it was just me, and I was on my own, and I've always been bipolar, and I had a horrific childhood, so, but now I care. So I went and I got these lab results, and, um, I'm okay, actually, across the board, surprisingly, but part of that is because I've been taking iron supplements for my perpetual anemia and I started taking magnesium supplements a few weeks ago uh, in an effort to do a more holistic approach to treating my chronic headaches <clears throat> which is an actual condition you can look it up it's a toy mouse under my desk apparently um, so I've been taking magnesium and I've been taking iron and doing relatively well um, except for, you know, the sinusitis. But apparently my blood labs reveal that I have a tragically low vitamin D level. And according to my doctor, testing vitamin D levels has only recently become fashionable in the medical community, which I don't understand how a particular blood test can be fashionable, but whatever. Now, I have asthma, and according to current medical definition, I'm overweight. I don't know what my BMI is, I don't really give a shit what my BMI is, but I know that I'm at a weight where there are questions about my fertility levels, and the fact that I'm heavy, just based on the given laws of gravity, means that conditions I have in my feet, knees, and back, which have absolutely nothing to do with my weight, are in fact made worse because gravitationally I have extra mass. So it's a physics problem, <laughs> not as much as a health problem in my view. <clears throat> so the low end of a healthy vitamin D level is 30. If it's 20 or less, they get very worried. I mean near 20, they get worried. My vitamin D level is 12. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And even Sam, I, he happened to call me while I was at the doctor's office, and my phone's pretty loud because I'm half deaf. Even he said, could that have something to do with the fact that you can't go out a lot of the time because of the weather? Which is true. I mean, aside from the asthma, I don't do well in extreme cold, and I don't do well in extreme heat, which is a combination, again, of my weight and my asthma put together. And the doctor could hear him on the phone, and she was really quite impressed with him. She really was quite impressed with him. 
And I said, well, you know, it's also, it's that, but it's also that I'm lactose intolerant. I can't get calcium and vitamin D from milk and from cheese and from yogurt. I mean, I eat lactose-free yogurt, which I am so happy Yoplay started making. Now, if I could only find it everywhere. But in any event, it's, it's those two things. So, you know, a lot of people, it's true. I'm functional dysfunction. Nobody understands how it is I can live a day-to-day -day life. I mean, there are many a day in my life where I don't know how I live a day-to-day -day life. I really don't. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to start taking this disgustingly high prescription dosage of vitamin D to get my levels back up. But it does seem to be one of those indicating factors that my low levels in some categories could be affecting things like my metabolism, which is why being on a healthier diet and having actually lost a few pounds, according to my doctor's office scale, um, I'm not having any significant weight loss. So, more holistic approach. Fabulous. I know that sounds sarcastic, but I am actually glad about it. I really prefer an Eastern way of approaching health and things like that. Um, already I've been talking a while. I didn't even notice. What else? Oh, I shared a uh, self-reflection with my dad the other day. I'm going to share it with you now. Is that for a lot of years, both when I had cable and when I didn't and had to watch things on the internet where I could, I've been really drawn to food shows, which I think has more to do with my heritage than my weight. Probably both. I don't care. But I was trying to figure out why I was so drawn to these shows, you know, like um, Good Eats and uh, Lydia's Italy, and there's several shows on um, Travel Channel hosted by Adam Richman. You know, like Best Sandwich and Man Vs. Food and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was trying to figure out why I like these shows so much. Sorry, my hair is getting ridiculously long. I was trying to figure it out, and it occurred to me why it is. Because it's basically about people who really enjoy, yes, food, but the process. They like to know what goes into it. They like to do it for themselves. They like to share appreciation of food. And... I worded this better when I said it to my dad. I know I did. Um, but I figured out that's why I like these shows, because it really does remind me of my dad. So how's that for a Freudian self-revelation? Uh, <clears throat> and it's, you know, here's an extension of that Freud revelation. My husband is very much the same way. You know, he doesn't have the technical skill for cooking, but he has the thirst to learn cooking. He doesn't want to like be a chef or anything, but he wants to know how to do it. He wants to know what goes into it, and he wants me to teach him, you know, when I can, where I can, how I can, given that I'm not a trained cook or chef, you know, I'm just someone who grew up in a very food-centric house. Um, but yeah, it reminded me of my dad, and I mean, to this day, that's true. Because what I said to dad on the phone was, my whole life, there are two things I can clearly remember my dad and I discussing that we would have disagreements about, but not full-on arguments. And my dad and I grew up in a really psychotically tentious, contentious, tension-filled household. And a lot of that had to do with my mother, who was a psychotic. But the two big things were music and food. And to this day, those are our two biggest bonding points. He tells me about what concerts he's going to and this uh, great restaurant that opened up in the city and you know he was in this other town near somewhere else that he works when he's afloat and they have a great deal for this quality food for so cheap and these are the things we don't fight about. We disagree. You know there are styles of food that he likes that I don't. There are foods that he loves that I simply cannot eat. Uh, the biggest point there being he is an absolute mushroom fan, as is my husband. And I am allergic, legitimately, to mushrooms. So I can cook with them. I don't have a violent reaction if I touch them, but I can't ingest them, or I do get really sick. So far, not hospital sick, but really quite close. Um, <clears throat> but yeah...
they remind me of my dad. That's what it is. And there's a lot of things I did with my dad when I was younger, like hang out at the radio station that he worked at and um, developed a taste for a lot of bands a lot of people never heard of for a long time. And then everyone did, and they were like, how did you know? I listen. How is... Why would some... You know, I never understood that. Why would someone ask you a question like that? I was a fan of Colby Kaye, for example, long before she had a major label. I was a fan of hers on MySpace ages ago. Bubbly was what I picked out as her first hit song. And it was. Now, I'm not suggesting that I'm some industry insider who has this great knowledge of music and I can predict what's going to be a hit. But I have a pretty high percentage rating of such things, you know? I have an ear for what's popular. I have an ear for what's going to be the most agreeable to the most people. There are categories I can't do it with. I don't listen to Christian rock. I'm not really a fan of gospel music as a musical genre in the world. I like gospel in some cases, but not as a facet of the music industry. I don't listen to thrash. I don't listen to metal. I don't listen to slash metal, headbanger, satanic metal, you know, very violent sounding. And I don't mean violent necessarily in a lyrical sense, but when you're talking about instruments that loud and that aggressive, I can't. I just, my headaches won't allow for it. But other than that, I really do listen to anything. I listen to a lot of international music, Italian music, Celtic music I love. Um... K-pop, J-pop, oh god, what else do I listen to? Everything. Folk, bluegrass, country, um, rock, mostly classical rock at this point is what it's considered, but mm, love music from the 60s, Motown, 50s doo-wop, um, 70s music, which is a bit more on the acid perspective, but that kind of falls down to how you think of Cass Elliot, you know, Van Morrison, Hendrix, Joplin, things like that. Um, 80s music. I was born in 83. I love 80s music. Period. 90s music. I don't know. I, I was turning 8 in 1990, and that's the point where I really kind of didn't understand music anymore. There's, there's been some good music since then, don't get me wrong, but the, the teeny bopper pop, the bubble pop, um, the, the stuff that's become mainstream since like 90, 92, that area, I don't get it. I really don't. I think it's because I grew up in a household with hippies. I mean, my idea of music is Carol King and Janis Joplin and Hendrix and The Who and The Knack and The Turtles and The Kinks and The Monkees and the Beatles, and, you know, uh, the Shirelles, the Chi Lights, the Jackson 5, yes, Michael Jackson on his own, um, you know, things like that, um, the Supremes, Diana Ross on her own, this, there's a whole spectrum of, um, music, Jimmy Valens, Buddy Holly, Yes, I did listen to Leonard Skinner, Pink Floyd. I mean, there's, there's a whole compendium of, of people that I listen to. But, um, I don't know, in the 90s, I just I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. But a lot of that credit also goes to my dad because, you know, he took me everywhere. My mom didn't really drive. My mother, excuse me. My mother didn't really drive. So everywhere I ever went, dad was in the car and we would listen to music. So, a lot of my quality musical interests and tastes should be credited to my dad. Although, to be fair, I've gotten him hooked on some very good bands as well. Guster being chief among them. Ugh, okay. I've been rambling, and I'm still sick, as you can hear, and I'm tired. I'm having a lot of fun playing with my hair because I just started using a new product I'll tell you about next time. But, um, okay. Hope everyone stays safe and warm and dry during this god-awful storm. We found Nemo, and now we don't want him.